Lindor liftoff, deep right field. Watching is nothing short of amazing. Ball game over. Expected across this game. My name is Jesse Sanchez. I'm a national reporter for MLB.com, and welcome to our first annual Hispanic Heritage Month roundtable. Uh, we have a good mix of old school and new school for you guys. Uh, joining us today our San Diego Padres shortstop, Fernando Tatis Jr. of the Dominican Republic, uh, Cleveland Indians shortstop, Francisco Lindor of Puerto Rico, um, Venezuelan star pitcher, Johan Santana, and last but not least, uh, the legendary Hall of Famer, Mariano Rivera from Panama. Uh, these men come from different places and they have different backgrounds, but they are brought together by culture, by the love of baseball. And what we're here to do today is to discuss how Latinos in baseball operate and how important Latinos are to Major League Baseball in this day and age. Can you tell us how each of you were discovered because you come from different places and how that relates to the Latino experience? I was at Showcase when I was 14. Uh, I think it was in Janky Academy over there in DR. Uh, yeah, it was fun because I was like one of the weakest, one of the, sh one of the shortest, one of the slowest guy in the group. And uh, yeah, I was there when I was 14 in the art and showcase. Can you tell us a little bit about your path, Francisco? I left, I made the decision with my dad, um, my stepmom to, and my mom as well, to leave Puerto Rico and come to the States. Um, one of the reasons was uh, I wanted to learn the language. I wanted to learn the culture and, and to play against different players. In Puerto Rico is a small island. Definitely a lot of great players over there. Um, and the great baseball is played over there. But to be able to go to Florida, which is 20 times bigger than Puerto Rico, and then be able to travel to Texas, California, and different places around the States, um, it was definitely gonna expand my, my, my baseball experience and hopefully get noticed and, uh, and learning the language and learning the culture and getting familiarized with, um, with things in the United States because they're definitely different than how it's in Puerto Rico, even though we are we're very Americanized. Um, just that having that 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 jump the opportunity, it, it was a huge impact in my in my life, in my career. And um, that's how I got um, recognized. That's how people saw me uh, playing in a travel ball um, tournament, uh, facing a guy. He, he was throwing 90 plus. I was probably 14, 15, and he struck me out in three pitches. And I said, next up, I'm like, I, I'm just going to throw the barrel. Whatever happens, happens. I just happened to hit a home run. The only hit in the tournament. Um, and then from there, people started to know me because I was playing 17U. I was 14, 15. Um, so people started to recognize me and, and, and pay more, a little more attention to me. And from there, it just everything took off. So, Johan, you were in part of an important wave of Venezuelan players. Can you tell us about that process, how they discovered you in Venezuela and how they discovered young players like you? Andres Reiner, who was the scout, who uh, he came over to, to my hometown and actually invited me over to, to work out, to go work out in the academy. And that's how everything started. But, you know, baseball has come, you know, big, big, big way, especially uh, back then in Venezuela, you know, being able to establish academies that were uh, that belonged to every single organization in baseball, and then and then they spread throughout the country trying to find players to to bring them in, to to have them work out, try out, and then and select them and bring them over. Mm -hmm. And Mariano, back in your day, you know, Panama wasn't necessarily a hotbed for baseball the way it continues to grow now. So can you just tell a little bit about that process of of how they found you? Well, how they found me is a miracle. Uh, actually, I was playing, I was in right field in my, for my home team. And uh, our pitcher was getting killed in the, in the first four innings, first four innings. So uh, we have no more pitchers. So I always love the game and I always like to compete. So uh, we got there on the mound and say, hey, we have no more pitchers. Who can pitch? I said, I pitch. I didn't have no clue about pitching. You know, I mean, everybody, literally, they all pitch. But I have no clue. 
sure enough, I was throwing the ball, but it looks like I was pitching. You know, pitching and throwing is two different things. All right, so at the end, uh, we, won the, we won the game, and uh, two weeks later, the cashier for the team and the center field for the team got me a tryout with the New York Yankees, and uh, I went there, and uh, the scout likes what I was doing as a pitcher. Again, guys, I, I, I had no clue what I was doing. But I went, and uh, he liked it. He said that uh, come uh, the whole week, I went. Saturday, uh, scout from Panama, from the Yankees, Panamanian, named uh, Herb Raven. He, uh, he arrived from Tampa, and uh, we were facing the national team, the Panamanian team, baseball team. And uh, since I was, because I wasn't even the guy that they came to see, I was kind of like the uh, fill in. It was two other guys before me. So if they have time, they would look at me. Okay, so since I was the fill in, I thought, well, I mean, I might be pitching last and I might do a good job. All right, so it didn't happen like that. I started the game and uh, thank God I, I did good. And uh, the next day, they signed me, just, just like that. How important is learning English? And is that something you guys really strive for? And do you think it helped you um, kind of develop as a player? Um, we'll start with you, Fernando. Definitely, definitely. You know, I feel like for us, as, as fast as we can learn English is going to be way better. Just the fact we can manage ourselves and, you know, in a different country. And just, you know, being able to socialize with the people of that country that they, they can I feel like they can appreciate it a little bit more. And, you know, they can see us a little bit different just because of learning their language. And Francisco, what were the obstacles you faced, you know, learning English from coming from Spanish only as your first language? The biggest one was to be able to order food, say the, the times that I, something was hurting. Uh, on the field, understanding my coach, and I, I was blessed enough to go to middle school and high school in the States, so when I first came, I had no idea what the books were saying, and sitting down in the classroom with a teacher, talking the whole entire time in English, when you went, you go from Puerto Rico, where everything's in Spanish, and one class in English, to every day in English, you would sit down in class and look around, lost. And that, to me, was the biggest obstacle to be able to, to communicate when I was hungry, to communicate when I was when something was hurting, and and to sit down and try to follow everything the teacher was saying in the classroom, it, it was definitely different and it was a big obstacle. And Johan, was English and adapting coming from Venezuela was that your biggest obstacle? Uh, definitely, to to being able to communicate and interact with people was one of the toughest things. But yet was the, the key for me to, to, to put myself into it and to try to uh, get better, uh, not just as a baseball player, but as, as, as a human being as well, because of the, the, the language was one of the most important things for me to, to learn through the whole process. And for you, Mariano, and you, as the elder statesman, I know you've seen a lot of baseball in the United States and across the globe. Um, what role does you know, learning the language and being able to navigate baseball here play? Coming from Panama, you know, I had no, no English at all. You know, first of all, uh, in 1990 was the first time that I left my country. And uh, I was in Tampa. And the foolish uh, uh, that I was, because uh, in Tampa, they spoke a lot, of, a lot of Spanish. So I felt like home. So now, the, the, the following year, they sent me to North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, and no one spoke Spanish there. So I used to cry, not because of the game. I used, to, I used to cry because I couldn't communicate. It was the, the most horrible feeling that I ever experienced because you can express yourself. You cannot, uh, Francisco was talking about, you know, what it hurt what's happening with you and you can communicate with that guy uh, uh, uh just that was a whole thing in school i put you know i didn't go to school to learn english my I, I learned english in baseball you know so i mean i was able 
because I was pushed to do that. And I understood that I needed, in order for me to be successful, I needed it to learn the language. And I always, always have uh, telling the players that they need to learn the language. This is a question for everyone. How important, how important is it to reach out to all the fans in both languages? I think, I think it's huge. It's extremely important to be able to um, interact and engage with Latin people and speaking people and Americans um, the, speaking the Latin, English. And not only in America, but Australia, England, all around the globe. And I find it so cool when you see a Japanese player, a Korean player, um, that they come and they have the three, four reporters with them. You know, that's, it's important to have um, them talking to the the people back home. And, and, and that that's always, I, I take a great pride on on being able to to talk and communicate and let people know that we humans, you know, you see us on TV, you might not, you might think, you know, our lives, but we humans, we make mistakes, we have emotions, we, we, there's days that we don't feel um, good, there's days that we feel great and we don't perform, you know, it's just we, we have, we humans, like I said, and, and to be able to communicate and talk and to the media and express them, um, are, how we are, we, we don't have to let everybody know how we feel on a daily basis, obviously, but to be able to communicate, I think that's huge. And being able to speak English and, and Spanish uh, is a blessing. Uh, I'm glad my parents made the decision to let me come to the States and I thank them every single day. Being able to take the time just to, com to communicate with different parts of the countries it's just big, uh, and I can I can relate to that because I'm I, I had been a fan, you know, and I'm when I was a kid I've received like like I've received videos from players like just you know speaking my language and just sending a message and just the fact that like how I feel when you know when the, this big guys this huge names people just taking the time just to you know to express yourself and just to talk about it. It's just, you know, it makes you, as a fan, it just makes you more connect to, to the players and to the fan base in general. You just feel, you just feel like more connect to the player. And Mariano, as the elder statesman, how does that make you feel seeing, you know, the next generation of Latinos connect to all fans? I mean, they're not just connecting to the Spanish fans. They're not to, just to the English, to all fans. When I see uh, Fernando, and Francisco and the other players uh, doing what they're supposed to do. It makes me proud. It makes me happy because it reflects the job that we did for so many years, it reflect the job that uh, the Cepeda and the Clementes and the Marichal did for so many years. So, and that's a legacy that we have to continue because it's, it's extremely important for us to communicate with the fans but also can never forget where we come from. Speaking of representation, and this is for you, Johan, how did you represent your country, you know, as a player? We represent a lot, not just for yourself or for your family, but for your whole country, you know, and sometimes, uh, especially when you're young, you don't get that, you know, but as time goes by, you'll see how important you are for your country and how passionate they are about, about, you about you about the game and then and then to me that was very important i took that as a as a big uh, uh honor you know to to every time that i went out and took the mound i thought about not just my organization and, and and my family but my country i knew in my back it wasn't just santana it was venezuela because i knew those people were watching that game i knew that um they were they were cheering for me and similar question for fernando um, how do you feel like you represent the Dominican Republic when you when you step on the field each day? Um, when I go to the field, it's just I just bring the art with me and you know, my heart and my chest and like, you know, I feel like you can tell when when a Dominican takes the field when you know how we play the game with joy, uh, you know how we enjoy this, how we how we manage ourselves and just you know, it's just it's just part of us. It, Every time we get on the field, we know, like Johan said, we're representing something else. We're representing our countries, our family. And, you know, that's a huge part. It's a huge part of us, how we're going to manage ourselves, how we're going to behave in and out of the field. And it's just, you know, 
we got I feel like every player should know like instead of before doing something they should think you know I'm representing a country I'm representing my family so how should I manage myself to do this and just a different situation so it's a huge part so the biggest young stars in the game today you know are Latino what does it say about the importance of Latino talent for Major League Baseball. Every time that I see these youngsters that I play with their parents, well, not with Joan, it's with Francisco. <laughs> but, but, you know, see them, it, it brought, it, it brings so much joy to me knowing that uh, they're doing it right. That's what I love. Right, right. So sometimes a lot is made of the unwritten rules of the game here in the United States. So specifically for you, and then I'll ask the other guys, how are you able to manage being able to express yourself, being able to be Fernando Tatis Jr. having such a great time, but also keep in mind these unwritten rules that are that exist somewhere? I mean, you just gotta keep it in the back of your head when you're playing, you know? This is in oh. the air to right field. Back it goes. Nando has done it again. Fernando Tatis Jr., a grand slam. And I uh, just got to respect that baseball is a little bit different over here. But then after that, I feel like we're all good. We still celebrate. We still have fun. We still, you know, play the game with joy and love. And I feel that's all it's about. A question for Francisco. You seem to have tons of joy on the field. You're always smiling. You know, have you ever done anything that's kind of gotten under the skin of another opponent or maybe you heard something about that? To me, my number one rule is do whatever you want to do. Just don't look at somebody else's eyes because then now, now you're taking it personal. Um, I smile. That's the way I am. I smile. I have fun. I, uh, if I hit a home run, throwing a bat to me, it's a little, it's a little much because I don't know when they go. I, 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 hit, I hit them. I my home runs are not as far, uh, but just, <laughs> just uh, smiling, screaming, getting looking at my teammates. Those are things that, uh, to me, they should. That that's just the right emotions to get the team going, get yourself going. Sometimes, as a hitter, um, you need it. And, and I grew. We all grew up saying three, two count, bases loaded, game seven. Um, hitting a home run, running around the backyard, celebrating, or some, I'm a, as a shortstop, I'm making plays it in my backyard, diving, throw the ball against the wall, dive for it, and, and get up and scream. And, and now that I have the opportunity to do things like that, I just do it. I just let it go. I just go with the flow. And hopefully after that, I just, if I don't look at people in the eyes as I'm hitting a home run, I'm making a good play. Everything is fine. Everything is fine, you know. And uh, when it comes to the unwritten rules of the game, respect your peers, respect the other team, and hopefully you don't get hit. <laughs> <laughs> but these are questions for the for the vet, for the veterans who are laughing really hard right now. Who the, also the have pitchers. And the pitchers. And the, pitch, the, and the pitchers. <laughs> and the pitchers. So I'd love yeah. to hear from the vet, the veterans and the pitchers. We'll start with you, Johan. Your take on the uh, unwritten rules. Here, here's a scenario. What would have happened if uh, Fernando Jr. hit the grand slam with a 3-0 and count late in, <laughs> late in the game, your team is up, and Johan Santana is on the mound? What happens? Well, the game has changed a lot, you know. But, but, I, but I tell you, you know, the, the, the thing here, the difference here is when you know who's on the other side, you know, that, that's, that's, that, that, that's a big difference because sometimes you, you, you're going to find yourself in, in, in a scenarios where, where, hey, this guy just came up, you know, he's, he's only been in, in the game for a few days or, or a year or two, then you see him doing stuff like that, you know, so, hey, wait a minute, you have to come down, you know, so most of the times, I don't think I would appreciate that, but, 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 but I tell you one thing, you know, it comes with personalities. Everybody's different. I think one of the key here is that being Latin, we know exactly how we are and how we enjoy the game, but also there's a big difference here as well, because you're going to have Latin players on, 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 on both dugouts. So now there is a chance that I know the guy on the other side, you know, and you rely to him, you know, Hey, 
that's how he is. You know, if if if, if this this thing is different, that's why when you play like in the WBC, you're gonna see a way different uh, Puerto Rico dugout or a way different Dominican Republic dugout or Venezuelan or or or, or Panama compared to Japan or or the U.S. or or, or Korea, you know, that's when you see how we are, you know, but definitely something like that, I don't think I'll appreciate, you know, I'll, I'll feel terrible. I, I want to make sure, you know, that, uh, but again, I, I tell you one thing, it's great talent, you know, if you make a mistake, they go, he's going to go for it. I mean, those kind of things, you know. So there's a question from Mariano. Mariano, how, how do you balance that? You know, you see, you see great enthusiasm, you see great energy, Obviously, Fernando and uh, Lindor and a lot of young players represent the Latinos very well. Uh, how do you balance that enthusiasm, but also have, you know, show them these rules or, you know, convey these messages of baseball here in the U.S.? I make sure that they know who is staying in the mound. I make sure <laughs> the youngsters respect the oldest. No, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I mean, I love, I love to see and the oldest playing the game hard way, enjoying it, living it. One thing I always ask, and I always, I always thought this way, you have to respect the game because the game of baseball, no one will be bigger than in the game of baseball. Therefore, enjoy, be the best for your team, be the best teammate, be the best peer that you can be. But also remember that you will be in the game forever. So whatever you want to do, enjoy it, man. But it's one unwritten rule. Just respect the others. It's simple. Hey, man, you take me deep, enjoy it. You, you, you hit a grand slam, bases loaded, enjoy it. It's, it's, it's how you going to enjoy it. All right? If, mm -hmm. uh, if uh, Francisco had uh, two days in the big leagues and I'm 15 days in the big league, he's taking me deep. And he's looking at me and flipping back. <laughs> the next game, it won't be flipping back. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. all that stuff, but it won't be flipping back. You know why? Because, I mean, it's all about respect. Francisco said, right, if you hit it, don't look at the guy. Because the guy may be, take it personal. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, you enjoy it. I have different ways to enjoy myself, but I did enjoy myself. I did respect everybody that I face, everybody that I play, but I enjoy, mm -hmm. all right? So my advice, and I always tell the boys, man, enjoy. This is something that you don't, that you won't do it for your whole life. So when you have a time to do it, enjoy it, but be respectful. I think so. I think it's huge. Like if the pitcher screams and celebrates, fine because i do the same thing i can't look at him and say something back at him because i do the same thing you know uh, and vice versa if he screams and I, if i hit home run i might be over 20 in my career against that pitcher if i just have a hit a home run rbi and i scream you know it's it just don't like don't be screaming and looking at that person because now it's between you and him now you're taking it personal now you now you're disrespecting others and not disrespecting the game. Oh, I'd like to thank uh, Fernando Tatis, Johan Santana, Mariano Rivera, and Francisco Lindor for your time and for your insight on a very important subject during Hispanic Heritage Month. Suerte, right. muchachos. Hey, thank right, you. Yes, Caballero, un placer saludarles. Todo lo mejor. Respeto, mi gente. Bendiciones.